Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to prep for a bag by doing some quilting. Now I asked for some inspiration in some Facebook groups and got some amazing ideas. So what I've done today is I'm just going to come up with something from scratch and see how I feel about it as we go. Now I have cut my zipper overlay out where I'm going to go. So make sure that is just a little bit bigger than the box inside box for your zip. And I have put foam on these. And as you can see around the edge of the foam, I have zigzagged with my machine so that it's not a big drop off for adding your zip later on. And I have foam on that one too, both out of the seam allowance. So let's mark one up. So what we're going to need to start with is rulers and a pen. Now the pen you use is very important because you very definitely need to be able to rub it off. So do not use something that is heat um, activated because they often come back so make sure and do test each individual product because I know they can be different okay so what we're going to do is I want to do a different design at the bottom than I want to do at the top so what we have to think about with that is of course with a tote this piece here is going to be turned under the bag so if we start our pattern here it's going to be lost so we want to start it so that we've got a bit above in there so I want maybe I don't know, let's come down, let's see what it's going to look like as far as balance. If I come down six inches, for example, and that's why I left this on a mat, let's come down to four, six, which is there. So what we're going to see is that much at the bottom, and after seam allowance, about that much at the top. So I think that's quite balanced. If you go half and half, if it's not exact, it's going to throw the eye. So make sure that your bottom is definitely a lot smaller. Even if you go with a third and two thirds, that's quite a nice balance. So what have we got here? We've got three from there and six there. So that is about a third of that distance from what our seam allowances would be. So I'm just going to go on the, there. So I'm going to put a demarcation line in. So I'm going to come up, say, quarter of an inch. If you can see on my... Make sure that's level because this is going to set the whole tone of the bag. So that there is one mark. So do I want to come down or go up? I think I'll come down. So what I'm going to do is come down half an inch from that line. Now you want to, when you do this, you want to make sure that this lines up perfectly with your lines below like that we should have marked our centers as well so that's a center now working on a grid board is very very helpful with doing this So I'm going to mark up this whole one um, and then I'm going to go and do some sewing. Now you can just draw, do these lines across here to start with, which gives you a base for what you're going to work with. But I know that I want my first V to come into here because I'm going to do a diamond shape up here and then I'm going to do rectangles down the bottom. So what I want to do now is draw a diagonal from there at a 90 degree. So if you've got a protractor, which will be the easy way to do it, or you can simply put the center of, put that there, and put the center of your squares on the line like that. So that those two there are definitely lined up. If you look at that, that's going through the middle of my one inch marks. And that is going to be a 45 degree angle. So if we do the same, now it should be able, you should be able to do it like this with that one. But you can double check because it's in the middle of those and it's going straight down there. Now if one of these is off, it is going to throw off the whole rest of your design. So be very careful about getting that point exactly right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw one inch lines all the way across there. Like that. Make sure that that line lines up and stopping there. Now 
Now if you use a bigger ruler, you can keep checking all the way along that this line is staying straight because if that's not, then something's going to be off as you get to an end and then the sides will not match up. Now I'm not going to come back this or come right down to this bit, I'm just going to leave it there. So from here, I'm going to do the same from the center line. So again, make sure these line up going through the middle. So those lines should be on those all the way up. It's a little bit awkward trying to get this and not looking definitely down on it with the camera. So that is the pattern I'm going to do on the top. So it's not really drawing worth drawing much more because it's all going to come off as we do it. But I will show you what I'll do on the bottom. I'm going to go a rectangle. So I'm going to go out two inches from my center line. So we'll put that, it's probably easier to use the board than to use the lines on there. Then I'm going to come along and do one inch lines from the bottom. So again, you can line that up on your mat so that you've got it and go with an inch on your mat as long as you're, it's not moving. And I'm not going to sew the bottom. And the reason I'm not is because this is going to be um, sewn and it's going to be a butterfly base. So it's going to have a row stitching along there anyway. So that has worked out perfectly. I hope you can see my stitch lines. Um, so I've got my diamonds completely both ways there. And obviously I'm not going to be sewing my center line. So I'm going to go and sew along these two to start with. And I shall turn you over to the machine so that you can see what I'm doing. So we've got our lines all drawn where we want them. Now I'm going to start with the two center lines along the middle because they are going to dictate dictate exactly where everything else is going to go. So I'm just going to backstitch at each end very slightly, like one locking stitch. And I've got my stitch length on five. So five gives you a really nice stitch. I'm trying not to touch my lines too much. So then I'm going to start by coming down my main V and back to that one. I'm always going to try and either start at this end, if I've got a full line, or off the edge. So now I'm just going to start doing my lines and the ones that I can go across I'll do but the ones that are ending or terminating on this line I'm going to start here and I'm going to leave long tails and pull them through. The reason I'm going to start on that line is then I've got a definite full stitch equally from there as opposed to having little tiny stitches along the middle. Now if you can't see your lines please don't guess, please redraw them. Now I backstitched there even though it was in, to, in there a little bit, but I know that's going to be in my seam allowance so it's not going to matter. So get long tails and put your needle right down onto that line. Leave those long and keep them out of your way.
I just went off my line a little bit. I don't think it'll be that noticeable. So try and keep all your threads to one side. So we're halfway through the top. So now we want to come back this way. So again, we want to start at the bottom. Might have to remark some of my lines. Yep, so my lines are getting a bit faded from me touching up. And I think I can see the others. As I said, don't don't guess. It's not a good thing. Make sure when it's coming back over the machine that it's not being pushed out by your machine by hitting on the inside of the throat of your machine. Now again I'm struggling to see my lines here. All these through the back first and keep them out of my way. Okay. And it's easy enough to keep them down out of the way. And so this way first. Don't be pushing down. If you just hold it gently and let the machine pull it through, you're going to not go crooked. And again, we're going to start at the top. I didn't need to come all the way down, but I thought I might. Pull those through. So I don't know if you can see, but starting right, if we start, because we started right there, we get a full stitch from there every time. So now we shall mark up the back. So now we've got our back ready to do. Now again, I'm going to start down here and go to this point. I'm just going to back stitch, not, not cut my threads, come back stitch and carry on there. So we'll just do that the same as we did the front. Might continue with these down here while I'm here.
again or work from the bottom. You know, I can start off with that. You can come this way because it's going to go off the edge a little bit. So there was our back. Now we just need to tidy it all up, do our pull our threads through like that. So there's our back, and there's our front. So now I'm going to put my tag in the middle there, so that when it folds like that, you shall see my tag there. I think that's a pretty cool design. Now of course with the back, you don't have to cut the hole first, you could leave the hole there and quilt and then cut, but I do like to have my foam squashed at the end. So I guess you could then zigzag around the edge if you wanted to, but now I'm just going to spend some time tying off my knots. So what do you think of this uneven quilting look? So it's not the same pattern all the way around, like it's not quilted right through. I quite like this, it's definitely customised, it's not just a standard design. And on a tote or something that goes like this, it looks really cool. Um, on a little bag, you would need to make sure that this, there was enough room to show it off. And if you were doing it on a bigger bag, I would separate my spacing a little bit more to maybe an inch and a half and a really big bag, maybe two inches, just so that you get the same look, but it's not becoming too busy with lots of small quilting. So that's my quilting for my modified little bag. And I shall put the link to me sewing this up at the top when that's all finished. And for now, I hope you have fun quilting. And if there's a particular design or pattern you like, please drop that in the comments and I'll check that out.